Hello, I'm son of Winter Tong Yang. I'm here to share a document that summarizes the key definitions, equations in the chemistry GCE O level Singapore version. Recently, my students completed their mid year examination, and I realized that some of my students have problems remembering the important equations and important definitions required in the examination. My students actually did well for the application questions, but failed to answer the definition as required. So I would like to share this document that I shared with my students so that they can improve from there. After uh, looking at how they wrote in their exam, I decided to share this document with my students to benefit them. Hopefully, they will improve from there. So these are the definitions and equations. In this document, I also consolidate my organic chemistry, acid bases and salts, chemical bonding, metals information within one document. Okay, the only important document that I feel that I should have included is air, but it's too much already. So that I will have a separate document instead. So there are a few key terms and definitions that are required for the GCO level chemistry. I shall go through all of them. The first one is on kinetic particle theory, where students are required to understand that all metal is made up of tiny particles and the particles move in constant random motion. Diffusion is a concept that was covered in the chemistry syllabus as well. Evaporation and dryness and crystallization are two different physical process to uh, obtain crystals in the in crystallization and to obtain um, a salt by removing all the water. Chromatography, retention factor, those I highlighted in bold are extremely important and they have been tested before in school exam paper or O level. Element compound mixture, students sometimes forget the difference between them. They, they may know how to identify them, apply the concept to questions, but sometimes the question require them to write the difference in words where they are unable to give the precise terms. Nuclear number, isotopes always come out in many school paper, but it's not so popular in O-level. Relative atomic mass, relative molecular mass, and the very important equations in the topic mode concept. All of them I've included in this document. Concepts of acid and bases, the difference between strong with weak acid, strong with weak alkaline. There was this question on what is alloy. Some students had this misconception that alloy is a mixture of metal with other metals. That is wrong. Alloy need not be a mixture of metal with other metals. It could be non-metal such as steel. It is made out of iron and carbon. Carbon is a non-metal. Some of my students still do not know the exact definition of alloy. They understand it roughly, but they couldn't write it in words well. Uh, some of the important terms that they should be very familiar. And activation energy catalyst was also asked before. What is exactly reversible reaction about? Homologous series is, is quite easy, but surprisingly, some students are unable to come up with the complete description of what it is. Okay, so I provided the complete answer. Hopefully, it will benefit the students. Allotropes was asked before, but it was not mentioned clearly in the textbook, lah, but it was asked before. Isomers, cracking, and the rest in organic chemistry. So what I mentioned earlier, I also included my documents for um, reaction in organic chem. What are the type of reaction, the name, the reagent, condition, and product, where students are required to know all of them. Anyone could be tested for the GCO level paper. All of it. 
And these are the ones that are non-organic reactions, like acid reaction is very popular, based with ammonium salt. Students sometimes forget this. Yeah, but it appears about three times. One in QA, one in bases, one in um, topic of ammonia. Precipitation, reactions of metal. Reaction of metal is a very big topic. So I give a very quick summary. Students are still confused between the reaction of metals with cold water and steam. With cold water, alkaline is produced, which could be something like sodium hydroxide, potassium hydroxide. With steam, it will be a metal oxide form. So that is the difference. Um, displacement of metal reaction. Reduction with carbon and hydrogen. Make sure that the students are able to identify the reaction. Um, I saw in a lot of school prelim paper as well as O-level, they have a setup with hydrogen gas passing through a metal oxide or they add carbon to metal oxide and heat. So um, reduction seems to be a very popular choice as well as decomposition of carbonate, rusting and displacement reactions of halogens. What I didn't include here was the topic of air. Okay, I didn't include here for two reasons. Number one, uh, there are quite a number of equations and reactions in that topic of air. Number two, uh, I'm not very sure if MOE decided to remove that topic because that was a topic identified to be removed if MOE decided to cut the last topic. Uh, last two years, they cut off organic chem, but after much discussion, they decided to remove air if there is a need to remove the last common topic that will be air for chemistry this year onwards. And I also included my summary of chemical bonding and structure. Uh, I shall not elaborate because I had another more detailed video in my channel that talked about this. It's exactly the same. I'm just compiling all the summary in one document so it's easier to revise. Um, summary of uh, chemical bonding and structure between simple molecules versus ionic compounds, metals versus giant molecules. Uh, properties to be compared are melting boiling point, electrical conductivity, solubility in water or organic solvents. And of course, there are other properties like density, malleability, hardness, softness should also be studied. Lastly, I have this document all about metals reactions and the reactivity series uh, showing the observations that students should write for the reactions of metal with steam, with cold water. Okay, do take note for zinc. This came out in my student prelim practical where the sample actually turned yellow and hot and white when cold and he or she couldn't remember this specific reaction, but it's under this topic. So this part is often overlooked. Just like, um, for example, um, cobalt chloride paper, which is blue in color, is used to test for presence of water. That is often overlooked as well. Because the experiment was not really done in school, as Singapore is too humid, but it could come out as a theory question. Because I remember many years ago when I was doing my own O-level chemistry, one of my prelim question was on this. What was a possible indicator for water? And I got it wrong because me, myself, at that point of time, didn't manage to remember cobalt chloride paper was used to test water. So I was kind of disappointed that I didn't score that mark. Here are the reactions of metal with acid and uh, students need to know the observations very well. Uh, they also need to say effervescence produced as well which is uh, colorless and odorless hydrogen gas and um, reactions of metal oxides with reducing agent carbon and hydrogen as well as the reactivity series and uh, the concept about a more reactive metal losing electrons more readily. Students tend to forget this thing. If you say a metal is more reactive, you must relate to it loses electron more readily especially when you talk about sacrificial protection, 
Yeah, it's not enough just to say, oh, zinc is more reactive than iron. So zinc can act as a sacrificial metal. No, you must say zinc is a more reactive metal and it loses electron more readily. Hence, zinc will corrode in preferentially compared to iron. Okay, and hence it will prevent iron from rusting as it acts as a sacrificial metal. Something like that. It has to be more elaborated la, from what usually a student will write. I also have included summary of acid bases and salts. How to remember uh, what are the soluble and insoluble substances. I, I do not know whether this will help, la, but um, some of my students say that it may be helpful. For example, maybe instead of silver chloride, put A, I put, I try to remember SL. Then spa, something like that. <laughs> then um, B, C, L. I don't know how would they help, la, but to me, I don't need that. La, but some students may find it very helpful. Uh, this is something I have already talked about in another video, so I shall not go through that extensively. All right. So how do you remember the steps in preparing the different type of salts? All right. So these are the three methods. La, okay. The details there and some um, mnemonic to help you remember the order. Okay, <clears throat> as well as types of oxides. And this one, this are uh, included last, not because they are least important, but precisely because they are quite important. And students often have problems with types of oxides. Yeah, so please be very clear with the concepts here and also know the color of the solution in universal indicator for strong, weak, neutral, weak, strong, alkali, etc. All right, so that's about it. I hope um, this document will help for my students. La. I, I created this because I noticed that my student surprisingly forget about some of the key definition. For example, isotopes, he actually got it wrong. I was very shocked. And then um, the student also got it wrong for uh, alloy for another one. So I decided to come up with this to help them remember. La. Okay. So that's about it. Thank you very much.